In this video, we're going to talk about another type of vacuum pump, the titanium sublimation pump, or TSP. A TSP works by running high current through a filament made out of a titanium molybdenum alloy, where the molybdenum is used to keep the filament structure stable at higher temperatures. The chamber is first evacuated to rough vacuum. Then, the filament is heated to a high temperature, but below titanium's melting point. This allows titanium atoms to sublimate, or skip the liquid phase and go directly from solid to gas. The gaseous titanium atoms will make their way through the chamber until they land on a cooler surface, where they will solidify and form a film of pure titanium. Pure titanium is very reactive, so if an oxygen or nitrogen molecule touches the film, it will react to form titanium oxide or titanium nitride. By reacting the air molecules into solids, the total amount of gas in the chamber decreases, meaning a lower vacuum is reached. Eventually, all the titanium will have reacted, and the TSP will need to be heated again to create a new layer and start the process over. After enough cycles, the TSP will have used all of its titanium and likely break or burn out. Here you can see a filament that burned out from being run too hot. Also, notice the mirror finish on the glass? That's the titanium film that has been deposited onto the cooler surface of the bell jar. Because the filaments will eventually burn out, modern TSPs have several filaments connected at a time, and the controller can switch between them as they burn out. The better the vacuum in your chamber, the less often the TSP will need to be fired or turned on. In a really good chamber, weeks can go by before the titanium layer is exhausted. I added a few large electrical feed-throughs to the chamber to run higher currents for experiments like this. I have a filament connected to the feed-through and a microscope slide hanging above it. As the filament runs, you can see the layer of titanium deposited onto the glass. This can also be done with other metals, like aluminum. This process is called physical vapor deposition, and it's the same technique used to create metallized plastics, like potato chip bags. Here's a dandelion I tried, and a much better looking clover leaf. Here's some footage of the TSP in action. Notice how when the filament first heats up, the pressure, measured in tor, increases briefly, then drops back down. This is because the filament has trapped a lot of water vapor and other contaminants from outside the vacuum chamber, and the first time it is heated, it releases them back into the chamber. After some of the water has been evacuated, the pressure begins to drop. And again, notice all the titanium being deposited onto the bell jar. We'll have to go back later and clean that. Just as the pressure increased when the filament heated up, as it cools back down, there's less water vapor coming off the filament and the nearby vacuum chamber surfaces, making the pressure fall slightly lower. Like I said, at some point we've got to clean this titanium off. To do this, I found that a Dremel with a buffing wheel attachment does a great job, and I'm just using regular toothpaste as an abrasive. Squeaky clean. After this, I went over the bell jar one more time with acetone. So I'm installing a conflat gasket onto this TSP, and I figured that I would film that just so you guys could see what that looks like. Usually I use rubber gaskets. This instead is a piece of copper, and the idea is that when you clamp these two flanges together, these teeth right here will bite down into the copper on both sides, and that forms the vacuum tight seal. And these are far better seals than the rubber type. However, um, one of these gaskets costs about, a, you know, a couple dollars. So that's how much it costs every time you open up your vacuum chamber. That's usually why I avoid using them. But so all we're going to do is take this copper, feed it down over, and align it. Uh, we're going to do the same thing on this side. And make sure that it is sitting on there correctly. And then we're going to take six bolts. And I don't know if it's actually important on the way in, but I typically do a star pattern.
And so what I mean by star pattern is you're going to start on one side, tighten that down, and then you're going to go to the opposite side, tighten that down. So the idea is that you're always working on opposite sides, um, and that helps evenly apply pressure on the uh, rubber gasket there, or copper gasket, I mean. Uh, because if it deforms, there's a good chance you're going to put a leak into your system there. And again, you don't want to have to take these apart if you don't have to. And you want to tighten them down pretty well. And keep going around because one side will probably get loose as you tighten down the other ones. Alright, and that's how you put on a conflat gasket. You can see the copper just inside that inner edge there. So I'm just about done assembling the TSP but I figured I'd point out a couple things while I'm making this video. Um, one thing is when you're putting together a TSP, you want to make sure that the filaments, um, this one has already been used, this is a new one, um, but you can see the way this is bowed out. Uh, as you run the TSP, they will naturally bow out uh, in that kind of shape, so it's important to make sure that you install them uh, in this direction, uh, where these, you know, where these parts are the lowest parts. Um, so that way, as it heats up, they will bow outwards versus bowing inwards or towards each other. In either case, uh, you would cause a short. Uh, and then you also got to make sure that these connections are far enough away from each other, so I will probably touch that one up a little bit. But for now, it's good enough. Um, the only other thing I wanted to point out, this is a mostly standard TSP, Although you can see that I have uh, drilled and tapped a hole here. And I did that to accept uh, a modification that I made. Because when you look down at the edges of this, um, the filaments themselves can actually stick out just a little bit past the edge there, which means they'll sputter in that direction. And so to try and stop that from happening, I turned just this aluminum plate. Uh, it's a washer there. And the idea is that with a bolt through it, Anyways, you can see the idea is that now there's a lot more protection uh, from the filament sputtering out in the forward direction.
So a lot of times when you're taking these conflat flanges off, they'll get stuck. Uh, some of them have this little bolt hole here. And what you can do with that is thread another bolt in. And as we tighten this down, it should break the flange free. Just like that. All right, and now I'll show you guys, this is why a conflat is not reusable. So there's the blank, and it's fine. And now I'm gonna pull off this gasket. Maybe. It's pretty cold in here, so that doesn't really help. Well, I'll get back to you on that. All right, so I got that flange off. Um, and first thing I wanted to show you is just, well, this one's definitely not reusable now because I did that. But the important thing here is actually that little ridge there. Uh, and that's where the knife edge bit into the gasket. And every time that happens, uh, it basically just destroys the gasket right there. It makes for a great seal, but it's not reusable at all. Um, another big thing I want to point out, the way I got this off was just prying at it by hand. You should never ever use metal tools around these knife edges because that is the seal for this so if you scratch the knife edge you the flange is probably going to be destroyed and won't seal anymore So as you can see, not exactly working with a ton of clearance here, but I think it should be enough. That last clip was the installation into the new ion pump. You might be wondering, what exactly is an ion pump? Funny you should ask. I've got more videos coming out soon, so look for that one, and a video about the benchtop CNC lathe seen in this video. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Leave me any questions you have in the comments, and I'll answer them as fast as I can.